There is no song. Be inspired on Liberty Radio. We're right now loading the truck. Three days ago, we were together with all the volunteers. We were packing, wrapping, and it was really nice. We know that this is the fifth time we are sending non-perishable food items to the Ukraine. But we made a decision some time ago that until the conflict there ends, we will do everything we can to keep helping. Things are not easy here in the UK. Things are tough, but our members always want to help. The pastors themselves, the pastors' wives also help, the assistants. And we'll continue to do so until it is necessary. We wanted to raise 21 tons of non-perishable food items and we raised slightly more than that, which is similar to what happened last time. We also raised just over 21 tons. And this is testament to the hard work and determination of our members and the people of the Universal Church at large because we live what the Lord Jesus said, that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We know that the situation in Ukraine is not as much in the eye of the media as it was before. But we also know from talking to the past there in the Ukraine that the situation is actually worse than ever. One of our churches, we are holding services in a, a bunker, a bomb shelter. That's how bad the situation is. So we believe that this help we are sending now will be more useful than ever. Good morning, everyone. We are starting our program, Be Inspired. And in this morning, we are going to be together here for almost a half an hour. And we are going to be talking about the Word of God. We are going to be talking about the spiritual things to feed your faith early in the morning. You know, before you go to work, before you go to do whatever you are going to do now, you are here receiving this spiritual food. And I would like you that is watching us now for you to interact with us. I was looking here before the program. Some people, they are already connected. We have here FPK 300. We have Norma from FPK 300 connected with us. We have here, of course, you know, don't be upset if I don't read your name because we have here plenty of people already connected with us, hundreds of people. We have here Plymouth, Plymouth connected with us, Paulo from Plymouth. We have Cuba connected with us here, Jillian. We have Plasto connected with us, uh, Lara. We have Woolwich and we have many, many people here. They are connected with us. You know, just let us know here in the comment section, what are you doing now? Are you now preparing yourself to go to work? Are you now, uh, today is your day off and you are taking time to watch the program? What are you doing this morning? Share here with us. It will be our pleasure, you know, during the program to read it and, you know, interact. Because the way we have to interact, you are not here in the studio with us. But the way that we have to interact is here, is our comment section, okay? It's, it's like you are here with us. And you could see uh, now in the beginning of the program that the lorry has set off. And the lorry going to Ukraine. You see that it's so great. It's a pleasure for us to help people physically and spiritually. Because we can't just say, ah, you know, I love souls, I love people, and do nothing. And in the UCKG, we do our best, our best to help people, not only spiritually, because the spiritual food is the, is the most important food, 
but we have to, to do something for our neighbors. And it doesn't matter which nation. You know that we have different nations. We have, for example, I am Brazilian. We have people from, from France. We have here people from, uh, uh, from Spain. We have people from Portugal. We have people, you know, we have people from different uh, areas in different nations in the world, different countries in the world. But for God, we are one. There is no nation. There is no, you know, nationality. In heaven, there will not be nationality. And, and whatever we can do, we do. And it was a pleasure for us. We were amazed yesterday when the lorry set off going towards Ukraine to help those who are in need now as they are in war now there, you know, they have no food, the proper food, you know, they're struggling with so many things. What's for us here is so simple. For them there, it's very difficult to reach or very difficult to have it. And in, in the world full of selfishness, we can do something. God counts on us, you know, all those who serve him, all those who have this cheerful heart given by God to help those who are in need. And we can do it thousands of times. And we will never get tired of helping and giving support to those who need. And now, I would like to play for you a testimony. Let's go for a testimony. And I would like you to pay close attention to this testimony because always we can take away something from a testimony. And then right after the testimony, we are going to be back talking to you something really interesting. By the way, let everyone in your branch know that we are live now here in the Be Inspired. Send a message. Ask them to tune in with us because I have no doubt, starting the day, being fed by the word of God, starting the day, you know, receiving the word of God, this is the best we can do. Let's go for this testimony and we're going to be back right after. Faith has, has helped me a lot to transform almost uh, all aspects of my life, of my personality, to overcome lots of uh, troubles and uh, situations in, in my life. Thanks to faith, supernatural faith. When I grew up, uh, because we were so many, we were 12, six boys and six girls, we were quite good together to the brothers and sisters. Uh, but uh, I grew, grew up without a father because he died when I was uh, four years old. My mother, she had a very loving marriage. All of a sudden, my father died of a, a stroke. This took a toll on, on, our, on our life, on me. When in my teenage years, I was wild, I was quite nervous. I had lots of problems. I was, I used to suffer from uh, terrible headaches since uh, by the age of 16. They were so bad, so bad that uh, sometimes I had to go to the A&E to be treated because I could not cope with them. My life is like I, I didn't exist then for one or two days. I learned to live with these, with these headaches. I didn't use drugs or anything, but sometimes I used to drink uh, alcohol, this kind of uh, life that usually teenagers are, but I started uh, being uh, rebellious. I didn't uh, listen to my mom. And then um, in my 20s, I met uh, my partner. After one year of living with him, I developed depression. I didn't eat much then. I didn't have the will to do nothing. I didn't feel like waking up the next day. I was feeling very down. I didn't tell anyone, I just overcame the depression indeed, but uh, I was never the same. This first bout of depression I had uh, happened when I was about 22 years old. On that specific year, there was a salmonella and uh, I got this salmonella. I was so bad that 
in maybe in, in 10 days, I lost 10 or 15 kilos. Only after that, I got this depression because all my vitamins, all minerals and everything, I lost everything. So it could be the cause of that. So when I started treatment and I started regaining my strength, depression went away step by step, slowly. I had my first child when I was 26. I had another son. Before I had my third child, uh, I separated from my partner. We were always fighting and uh, shouting at each other. We were not happy. Life was started to become very difficult to take care of them and to, to raise them. I had to work and uh, everything was on top of me. I was very frustrated. Sometimes I used to remember how my mother must have felt. Well, she had a lot uh, more kids than I, but I was in the same situation because I didn't have a husband beside me to help me. Until one day, a friend of mine invited me to, to attend the Universal Church back in Portugal. I found it very, very interesting. But after seven months, my life was so full, like I had to work, I had to take care of the kids, I had to, to deal with everything. And both churches were quite far from where I used to live. Sometimes my car used to break down. I had no condition to attend the church. So therefore, I left the, the Universal Church. My life started to become worse and worse. I, I eventually lost my house. I had to sell it. When I was about 35 years old, I developed panic attacks and anxiety. Every day I had to go to the emergencies because I thought I was going to die. I was very worried about my children because I thought that my kids are going to be without a mom. I was medicated for for a couple of months. I made the decision, I'm going to move to, to England. I had no more hope living there in Portugal. In the beginning, I, is, I organized everything well, so the anxiety was getting worse and uh, I didn't know what to do. After I moved uh, to the United Kingdom, I, I met my now my husband. We started the relationship after a few months. We used to get benefits. And when my partner moved into my house, I didn't want to, to declare him so I wouldn't lose the benefits. So I was lying. My eldest son, that we were on the bus and he found a, a newspaper, City News. And he just uh, went to me and said, look, ma, may you are. And he gave me the newspaper, that's it. I came to on, on a Sunday, following what uh, the Word of God was asking me. I did my first sacrifice two months after entering the church. I went with full power. Uh, that's when I, I decided to give up on lies, because I understood that if I wanted to serve uh, the truth, which is God, then I had to tell the truth. I gave all my all on that sacrifice. And since that day, my life, my life has never been the same. I received the Holy Spirit. The Lord showed Himself to me and it was, it was amazing. Today, my life is completely transformed. I was living with my partner, but then I understood that I had to pursue our wedding. Then he started seeing changes in me and I invited once or twice. My husband started attending the churches today wonderful man of God. We are not rich, but we, are, we miss nothing. Everything we want, we have. We used to ask money from other people. Today we lend panic attacks, they vanished. I don't know what depression is anymore. I have peace, even though I face sometimes troubles. <laughs> this peace is unbelievable, it doesn't let me give up. <laughs> Before I used to, to, to enter the hospitals through the a and &E, but today God blessed me with a wonderful profession. I am an interpreter and I enter to, through the main door and I help uh, uh, those who are sick. I pray for them. I, I go there with a mission. <laughs> it's beautiful. All because of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord. When you're facing a problem, who or what do you turn to first and why? Um, I feel like I'd normally go to my friends. They probably go through similar situations, so they can give like relatable advice. For me personally, I'd probably say family. Family is just the one that you go to because they're the closest. I usually turn to myself. The reason why I say that is because when I was younger, I kind of like, went through a lot of things and I felt like no one was there. So I had to do everything by myself. So now it's just like at a place where I'm just like, let me do it myself. If it doesn't work, then I might ask for help. But I like to do everything by myself first. Friends first. 
because I wouldn't want my family to worry. Usually because that's my support group. Um, you know, they're the people that would normally support me. What my first point of contact would be my siblings. No one's got my best interest at, at heart more than my family. They're the people who have loved me, who have invested in me, who want to protect me the most. They would feel it wherever it is. They'd probably feel it in the way that I do. Well, I suppose family and friends first. For advice, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you find out people who've had similar experiences. They may have expertise, who knows? It's free advice, for apart from anything else. Family's everything to me. My mum's my best friend. My brothers are my confidants. They've looked after me since I was young. They're the ones who can advise me truthfully without having any other judgment on me as well. Uh, probably to my mum. I moved away when I was really young, and I think when I moved away when I was 16, she was ringing me all the time, like every day, and we kind of just got into that habit, and now we just... I stick to that sort of anything. And she does the same, to be fair. As I've got older, she's like, what do I do now? And I'm like, no, I can see the roles reversing. <laughs>
Even when we talk to people on the streets, sometimes, you know, evangelize and so on, we can see that people, they are so distant from God. When you offer a prayer to them, sometimes one minute, one minute, and they don't have time to stop. They don't have time to talk to God. That is very important for you to take this word into consideration and set your mind on the things from above. Even though in our days, it's getting even worse and harder for people to keep their minds connected to God, but that is very important for you to spend your time doing things for God. For example, how often do you read your Bible? How often do you take time to pray, to talk to the, the only one who can give you strength? You know, how, how much time do you spend talking to God? And friends, be careful. Because in our days, technology, technology is something good. You know why? This program here now, you are watching this program because we have internet here. You know, uh, I would be uh, uh, wrong if I say that we don't need internet. But the problem is that the technology is growing and growing and growing and growing and developing and people, they are getting even more distracted. Sometimes people, they get two hours in their phone, you know, scrolling up and seeing sometimes nothing, just spending time there or wasting time there. And they don't talk to God anymore. If you want to be strong, you have to spend more time or spend longer with the things of God. And friends, talking about that before we pray, I would like to talk to you about something powerful that we are going to have in the church. We are going to have on the 15th of September, the great event of the anointing oil, the blessed oil. This is a, a great opportunity for you to use your faith. Maybe you are watching us now and you are suffering. You are watching us now and you are going through trials and tribulations in your life and you don't know where to go to. Maybe you tune it in uh, in this morning for the first time. And let me tell you, let's put our total strength to come for this day. To get, we have there on the altar of our Cathedral of Miracles and in all the branches spread all over UK, we have a container with oil on the altar that we have been praying and consecrating during the whole, you know, during the whole week, during the whole period until the day of the event we are going to be consecrating and blessing that oil. The oil represents the Holy Spirit, my friend. We need to use our faith. We were just talking about, thinking about the things from above. You know why people sometimes, they don't overcome certain problems? Because their mind is not connected to faith. Their mind is not connected to the things of God. Always when we have something talking about faith, they run away. If you want to overcome the, your problems, situations in life, you have to put your faith into action. Sitting down, murmuring, it's not going to change anything, okay? I have here my cup with water already, you know, prepared here for us to, to, to say our prayer to God now. But before we say our prayer, look how interesting it is. <laughs> we have here two viewers. We have Anthony and we have Sam. <laughs> Anthony from Cuba just come, just come in from work, listening to the program. In other words, one came in from work and is watching the program. Some from Stratford is watching the program before starting work. In other words, 
They are changing shift. One is going, <laughs> another one is coming in. That's so interesting. Amen? Okay? Prepare your cup with water because now is the moment of prayer. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. My lords, this is a pleasure for us to be here in this morning, sharing the word with those who are with us here, people that sometimes every morning they don't, you know, they don't lose, they don't miss any program. They are here, some of them going to work, some of them coming in from work, but they are always connected with us and receiving the spiritual food. I would like to pray for them, my God, if there is anyone that is going through trials, tribulations, if there is anyone that is suffering, I would like to ask you on their favor, my God. Let them have ideas to get out of that situation. Inspire them, my God. Give them wisdom. Give them knowledge, the, the knowledge that, it, that they need to get out of the situation. Give them your spirit. And here, my God, we pray for those who are suffering, suffering. Maybe they are not even watching the program, but they are, you know, on the streets, suffering, my God. Let these people find solution for their lives, and the solution is God. My God, we would like to bless the, the cup with water, the, the glass with water, my God, that this person now, that is watching us, they are holding their hands. Let your spirit and your power to come into this water, blessing them abundantly in the name of Jesus. When they drink from this water, I have no doubts that your spirit will come within them. Because you said in your word that you are this living water that brings life to all those who seek you. My God, I pray for everyone and I determine that your spirit will take them and will bless them. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Well, I have no doubts you have been blessed through this prayer. Your day is going to be a blessing. Before we finish the program, let's go for the thought of the day. Let us see what is the thought of the day for today. Let us see. And now, the thought of the day. Well, the thought of the day is... In times of trials and tribulations, make God your best friend. Friends, you will never regret if in the times of trials and tribulations, you put God as the first one who you're gonna, you are going to, to turn to. There are people that in the times of trials and tribulations, they do so many things, they run left, right, and center, but they don't remember that God is right there for them, okay? Keep this in your mind and always do that. You will never ever regret. Friends, it was our pleasure to be here in this morning with you. Tomorrow, we are gonna be here together again in the same faith, tune in, Make sure that every day you are going to be here with us, you know, not physically, but in spirit, we are connected, okay? I'll leave you with this, you know, this advert talking about Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, and Wednesday is the day for us to come to the house of God and feed ourselves with the Word of God. Let's go, you know, for, for this uh, advert, and I'll leave you with this advert, and I wish you all a very blessed day.
Do you know what these sounds mean? They are the warning cry of creation. Why so much suffering? Why does each passing night and day seem to bring more pain and destruction? Human error. Listening to the voice of lies has subjected the world to vanity and separated man from God. While nature screams, announcing the proximity of the end, the world hovers in the void of its most useless things. Guided by lies, giving value to appearance, which is the best propaganda, the truth agonizes. When lies are planted, the harvest is destruction. The world is collapsing. The groans are not just in nature. The loudest groans of pain come from the human soul, which knows it is far from the Creator, far from the only one who can give it meaning. Wandering from one meaningless endeavor to another, hoping to find a place to belong. God placed eternity into a man's soul. The soul knows its place. And when it finds itself so far from where it should be, the agony is indescribable. Waves of pain. All creation groans. The world groans as the time for the last chapter of this earth is approaching. Far from God, the soul groans, knowing that the end is coming, an eternity of terror. And God's children also groan because they still have to endure this world for a while longer until they finally reunite with their Creator. And the pain increases, coming closer and closer, like the previous wave. Labor pains announcing the arrival of the child. That is good news for those who have already achieved salvation. However, it is despair for those who still do not know where their soul will go.